Okay, hello and welcome to my presentation about portal frameworks. Uh, actually, on the internet, you can find many manuals, many how-tos, how to use frameworks which are in Liferay. That's very common. You can find them on, um, the, uh, on the developer network. You can Google them. But what you rarely see is information about uh, what are the limitations of the frameworks, what to do or what you shouldn't do, what to avoid. And we, all, we use those frameworks in Liferay in projects, many of them, and I would share some experience and some advices or tips from those projects. So who am I to give you advices? My name is Aleš Rybák. I work in this company as a software architect and a developer. I work on many projects for different, different customers, mainly on this platform, which you probably know. Liferay has a lots of frameworks in it, and actually, you don't have to use them. As we didn't, uh, we didn't use them in, in the beginning as well. We just used pure portlet specification portlets, some custom JSPs, uh, some, some uh, JavaScripts, some CSS, and that was it. That's what, that was it. We wanted to stay uh, compatible with another implementations of the portal. Uh, for example, IBM WebSphere portal, which we used as well for the projects back then. And actually, uh, we saw that this is not enough, that we need to integrate into Liferay more because of several things. First thing was we needed to speed up the development because there was not, no time for creating everything from scratch, and Liferay had already some frameworks which made it easier for us and a little bit quicker. So we leveraged that. As well, we needed to integrate into the look and feel of the portal, because if you use, for example, JSF framework on Liferay, it will look differently than the rest of the portal, which is not good for your users and the user experience. That's another thing. Uh, next thing was that uh, the portals were, back then there were two types of portals, intranet portals, which had applications, and public portals, which had static content, mainly. And the thing is, those two are mixing. So nowadays, the internet portals are looking more or less like websites portals. They are easy to use. They are nice. They are responsive. Those are the requirements the customers are telling us at the moment. As well as the public portals or the web portals are the customers want functionality and information which are usually stored in the backend systems. So those are information and functions which were originally in the intranet portals. So those two are like very close, getting closer and closer together. And this means that you need to use uh, things and frameworks which will make it easier for you to uh, Speed, uh, speed up development and uh, have the same look and feel and uh, user experience. So what frameworks you can use? You will definitely start with the portal and the portlet specification for uh, developing portlets. Those will give you pages, of course, so you can put the portlets on them, mix the, mix the applications together, make some content from different portlets on the same, on the same page, stuff like that. You get the request lifecycle, so you can process uh, actions. You can render the content for the, for the whole page. You get user information for the request, so you can get the user ID in the portlet very easily. You get a way to communicate between the portlets on the page. You get caching on the portlet level. Oh, not in Liferay, actually, because the implementation in Liferay is storing the data you cache in, portlet, in portlets into user session. So is a good way uh, how to kill your session in the application server. So not, not in Liferay. But you can use caching on other levels, page level, in the application itself. It's OK. And also, uh, the portal and the specification, it will give you free hands. You can use whatever technology you want. You can use templating engines. You can use, um, I don't know, persistence layer, hibernate, whatever you want. It's up to you. 
And Liferay will give you some frameworks which will make it easier for you to start and look the same as a portal, uh, behave same as the portal, and do it in the Liferay's way. So the first one is for caching. Liferay internally use EH cache, and it's super easy to use for you. You just call uh, one Atil uh, class, you get the cache, you can store data into it, you can get it, and it's clustered already. If you cluster it in Liferay, it's clustered for your application. That's very easy, very quick. The drawback here is that it's using EH cache. Maybe EH cache isn't, uh, uh, or hasn't all, this, uh, all the features you need. Then you need to use some custom cache or some other solution. And the other drawback is that the configuration is in XML, which is in a portal itself. So if you want to enhance uh, the cache for your custom entity, you have to go into the portal's XML and touch this, which, isn't, which is making it a little bit, you know, you are in a, somehow you are starting to be very tightly coupled with Liferay and its configuration. The advice here, and it's, if you remember one thing, only one thing uh, from this presentation is this thing, don't use custom caches, please. Don't store data from your backend in uh, hash maps in your programs. Use some major uh, cache framework, use Liferay caching, it doesn't matter, but don't use hash maps or, or some proprietary solutions for this. It will stab you in the back like a few months later, believe me. I have seen this many, many times. Next thing, scheduled jobs. You don't have to use Quartz for your job applications. Liferay has, already, uh, has it already in itself. And you can very easily uh, add one class, one line in the portal uh, descriptor, and you can use it. You can start your scheduled jobs and start, um, I don't know, every four minutes. It's up to you. Some edge cases are not covered in this, but it will probably not affect 99% of the, of the problems in the, in the real world. Another one is service builder. Uh, service builder is a big topic with our customers. Everybody says it's good. I say it's good, but, and the, the thing is you can easily generate data and service layer for your application. You can leverage many technologies which are in Liferay very easily. You use the same principles that Liferay uses. So you are very compatible in a Liferay way. The thing is, there are, for example, non for, no foreign keys in database. Uh, for big projects, from our experience, not that good because it's not very well maintainable. And uh, we actually had a, had a project based on Service Builder which failed because of Service Builder. And we were not enough flexible with, with it, and we were not able to make the changes in the way that we wanted. And we went into some technological problems which were not, we were not able to solve them either way that we switched uh, out from Service Builder and built it on a separate technology. So Service Builder, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying it's bad technology, but I'm saying it has its limitations. For me, it's small projects like if you have three entities, perfectly okay to use Service Builder. If you have bigger project, I would say use something else or wait for Liferay 7 and like slice the project into small services and make it modular. That would be the way I would say. Another one, users, roles, permissions. Very often you need only user ID, very often. But if you don't, if it's not enough for you, you can use permissions algorithm from Liferay. It has very good performance. It's integrated with search, so if you will, uh, it's including the data about permissions into uh, the search indexes. So if you will create the right query, it will give you only the results which the user can see, which is very quick and very efficient. You can use it for your custom entities. So you can use it if you have your own project, you can use it there. The thing is, you can, have only, you can only add the permissions for users. So if you give somebody the permission to do something, you cannot take it from him uh, on some lower level. 
which is, for example, problem uh, when you uh, set it globally, you can't take it from the, from the user. Uh, there are no hierarchies, like true hierarchies. That you make a tree of folders, for example, or something like that. And uh, the only, only role, uh, or the role is only target for the permissions. You can't set permissions for the user. You can set the permission only for the role and the user, put the user in the role, which can be also, uh, in a way, a uh, problem for some, for, for some uh, solutions. Uh, advice here is uh, if you find yourself using uh, the method is user in a role in your portlets, then probably you have a bad uh, design of your portlets. If you find this method in your code, uh, think about your portlets and make them uh, or slice them into more portlets, one portlet for each role, and let the portlet administrator decide which portlet use on which page for the role and use the portlet's permissions on the higher level. You will get uh, very good flexibility with the portlets in this case. Friendly URLs, that's a must have, I think. Very easy to use. You will just put one line in the portlet descriptor, put one XML with the patterns, and it's working. Perfect. I like this very much. Uh, Expando or Custom Attributes Framework, again, very easy to use. Uh, the, uh, it works like you can index and search the custom attributes for almost any entity, and it saves lots of time. I've been there when LifeRay didn't have Expando, and it saves a lot of time, because you don't have to hack into portal, you don't have to make custom tables in the database, you don't have to uh, connect it to the get together. This is really, really quick and efficient. On the other hand, uh, watch out if you will create too much ex uh, attributes and uh, make the or, or build your logic uh, on top of them, you can uh, have uh, performance problems. Uh, as well, if you are used to get uh, or do really uh, complex SQL queries, then the expander will not help you very much. I would say the opposite. You, are, you will be not able to do them. For example, to do the, do the sums based on uh, those attributes is very, very hard and almost impossible. Uh, next one is document library. I think you, everybody knows it. But uh, the thing is, you can use it not only from UI, you can use it programmatically as well. So you can use your, your portlets, your logic, to use those documents, put them in there, uh, let the users do almost anything with them. You can use metadata, you can use permissions, clustering, workflows. That's all of those things you can leverage and use, use it in your application. And uh, it's very often used in real projects, really. Uh, what you will face is mainly the, the metadata API. Sometimes you, you will have a little bit struggle with uh, getting some concrete information from the, from the metadata. Sometimes it's hard to get the right piece of information because uh, the metadata is quite rich. So yeah, that's one thing. Then another thing is indexing, because LifeRay document library, it indexes all your documents by default. And it can, if you will put their uh, big, uh, big files or special types of files, it can crash your portal. So cre uh, test very carefully uh, before the project goes live and uh, limit the types of files which are being indexed in, uh, by document library. For example, uh, CAD documents, like uh, you know, the architectural drawings, those are not good for the portal. It's uh, crashing the portal all the time. But those are, those are the things which is very capable to uh, index, but it's usually unusable for real life. You don't, know, you don't need to index uh, such drawings. And another thing is performance. Of course, if you have metadata, permissions, clustering, stuff like that, it's not that performant as a pure file system, which can be as well suitable for some, uh, for some reasons, for some situations, uh, if you are dealing with uh, uh, big amounts of data or big amounts of documents. Uh, this is the better thing to use just, uh, just pure uh, file system because the files are not being indexed. 
the files are not being processed by LifeRay. Okay, next one, web content, very, very often used. You, can, you are mixing together the static content and dynamic content using web content. And uh, the, another, another big, big plus is that the customer can edit the text, which is very often the request for almost, almost every customer we have. You get consistent user experience because the editors are using it or editing it uh, using the editors which are built in in LifeRay, so they are used to them. And uh, structures and templates, if you are not using them, start. Those are great thing, and it will save you uh, lots of uh, pain when migrating, when uh, creating or changing the content. It's really, really, without this, you can't do web content properly. Uh, I've found only one drawback lately, the templates uh, for structures and templates, they are not cached by default. It can be switched on in database, but not via UI. I don't know why, but it's, it's a bug in 6.2. Maybe it will be fixed later. Some advices. Um, very nice thing is that you can use web content as an output as well. So if you are, for example, generating reports, daily reports of something, you can put those reports as a web content and serve them to your users via, I don't know, as a publisher. Uh, if you are using or touching um, the content and you want to display it, always use con content display util and don't ever use uh, journal article util for this because a uh, journal article, it will do almost the same, but it's not cached, and it will always process all those structures and templates again, which is very performance killing. And uh, don't rape your asset publisher portlet. Sometimes, and very, it's more and more often, it happens than the that the customer, he wants something special with, the con uh, with displaying the content. And the asset publisher is almost capable to do it but not, not capable out of the box. And very often, the developers go and hack the asset publisher. And very often, it's much easier to just get the web content from your portlet very easy, put it into JSP via Taglib, and that's it. You don't have to do some really nasty hacking into asset publisher. OK. Next one. This is very nice. Categories. Uh, if you are dealing with permissions, and you need the hierarchy in the permissions, then categories are the thing you will use. Uh, this is the savior here, because categories can, you can uh, put the permissions on your categories, and the categories will do, do the hierarchy. So it's the, it's the very strong and strong thing which will make your uh, portal and the projects very flexible uh, from the life race point of view, from the asset publisher point of view. Uh, the categories, they have, uh, you can set properties for them. Uh, not many people know about this, but every, cat every category can have uh, uh, properties. You can use them programmatically, for example. So you can set some ID and, use, uh, and find the category via this ID, which is really nice and easy, and you can use it, again, for the permission checking automatically, for example, or setting. And they are easier to leverage. So if you have your own portlet, you will just use a taglib, put it there, and suddenly you have a nice category selector, which is LifeRay selector, same as in LifeRay. As well, you uh, put another taglib in over there, and uh, it's displaying uh, what categories the entity has. So again, very easy via taglibs, easy to use. Uh, Application display templates. This is lately. This is the favorite one. I would say uh, we are using it all, almost every project uh, because there are, is almost no hooking of asset publisher JSPs or other portless JSPs, which was very often done before. So now we just uh, pre prepare the templates, put them into the portal, and the portal will use them. We have uh, another layer of flexibility. We can use the portal or, or the portlet in two, two different scenarios, which will look uh, totally different, and it's easy to do. So very nice thing. Uh, one, more, mo one small thing, if you use them, you can make a security hall uh, via enabling a service locator. The own, uh, every editor who can touch this can do almost anything to the portal. 
because via service locator, he can touch all the utils and, for example, add users. And sometimes it's tricky to get some data. It's similar to the metadata in, in a document library, so the templates are then a little bit complex. But still, the complex templates aren't, not, are nothing in the comparison with uh, hooking the portal with uh, hooks and JSPs and maintaining them and stuff like that. Some more advice is uh, for ADTs. If you are, you can leverage them for your own applications. You can use them uh, in your own portlets. Uh, don't do this if you use the portlet on, only on one place because you will just add complexity to your, your whole application. Uh, use it if you are making products. For example, the portlets should be on five places or five different, port, uh, five different, different portals. Uh, if you don't know uh, whether to use ADT or structures and templates from uh, the web content, probably you want to go with the ADTs because they will give you more flexibility when publishing, for example, using staging. And uh, yeah, uh, if you struggling to know or to choose uh, whether free marker or velocity, go with free marker. It's shorter, LifeRay prefers it, and you could use taglips in there. So those are, otherwise, those are almost the same technologies, but uh, yeah. And also you can edit your templates for ADTs externally. You don't have to use the live phrase built-in editor all the time. You can download them via, for example, WebDAV, edit them externally in your favorite editor, save it into your versioning system, and then upload them back to the portal, which will give you control over the versions, some backup as well. And uh, yeah, your, your favorite editor is your favorite editor, of course. Staging. The most hated feature it was, I think, <laughs> last year called. Uh, the thing that with staging is, it's almost a must-have for uh, enterprise content. You can't work without it when you have many uh, many redactors for your system, and it allows you to uh, separate your administrators or redactors and the users which are using the site. It allows you to really increase the security because the part which is capable of editing the content can be hidden in the internal infrastructure, while the part which is uh, accessible via users and hackers, uh, it's, it's, uh, not, it, it doesn't have the administrative rights or, or it can't do so much harm. It allows you to increase performance. Also, you can use it for your custom entities as well. So there are many plus, but there are also cons, because on staging, the, the development is very quick. Almost with every major version of LifeRay, there was a major change in the, in the staging. And the thing is, it's not very well tested, it's uh, very complex, and uh, sometimes it can you kick a little bit. Also, the performance, if you ha uh, when you have big site, like thousands of pages. The staging can perform like not very quickly, and it's better to uh, start the uh, publication during night. Uh, staging version versus permissions. This is a problem which is in the thing that you have a site, and on the site you can uh, assign staging as well as uh, permissions. But if you want for some people, to have the ability or the right to uh, publish only part of the site, then you are screwed because you can't do that. Uh, they can publish only whole site. And there are some other limitations, of course, like uh, you can't send only partial content, you will send all the content and then only the changes will be published, stuff like that. The advices here are First, set expectations for your customers, always, with staging, because many of those customers who want staging, they already used one, and they know how it worked before, and they want the same. And they, it never, it's never the same as in LifeRay. No hard feelings. <laughs> but it's always is different. And uh, the customer needs to know this beforehand. We, 
happened to have this issue like three times. Uh, not again. And also adjust the project plan appropriately. Just give, give yourself some time for starting up the staging, using it, start, use, use it from the beginning of your project because uh, it might happen that you will occur a bug and as soon as you find it, it it's all better for you. Asset publisher and assets, those are things which are very good for the UX and for the uh, look and feel, which is which is the same all over the whole portal. And you can use the assets for your own own uh, entities again. And uh, you can tag them, you can categorize them out of the box. You can make the related assets. So you can uh, again use the portals for related assets. You can use asset publisher. Uh, very, very nice thing, uh, very often used uh, for internal portals or where, where the usability is uh, really matter. The bad thing is not everything in the portal is asset. For example, message board category, mm -mm. only message board message, for example. So this will not display, you can't display message board category as a, as a uh, asset in asset publisher. So it's all about doing it your way versus using uh, the thing which is, uh, with, which is in life right out of the box. And uh, when you're doing it your way, you know, it's more work, more effort. You need to know the technology. You need to put it up and running. But um, you have control over it. You can choose your technology, life ray, all of portal framework, they uh, portal framework. They want like uh, tell you you can't use this versus the th the stuff which is in LifeRay, which is prepared. It's the way the LifeRay does it, and it it's very good for starting. Very good for um, many main scenarios. So it can help you speed up the development, and very often you end up uh, using LifeRay stuff. Because of the uh, because of the UX, because of the uh, unified uh, experience, which is good over the whole portal. Okay, thank you for your attention. And yeah, I think there is some space for questions. Yes, we have a few minutes. Please raise your hands. Who has question? Hi, Alex. I have a question. Did you remember? Uh, don't use the, the builder of the ADT from the LifeRay. What's your favorite tool to the migrate ADT into LifeRay portal? Some hook, some some Groovy script, or something else? To migrate ADTs. Yeah. Well, ADTs are in LifeRay in uh, since 6.2, so we are not migrating them yet. <laughs> <laughs> the big content of the ADTs, like the templates of uh, inside a portal, how to use it. You, you just edit it in some editor outside of the portal, and how you okay your favorite way to do it. Mainly, it's done manually at the moment, using very often using the library inside uh, editor, which is in in there. Uh, the inside editor has one nice feature against your, like your favorite editor, which is you can uh, select, or, or it allows you to select, the, uh, for example, the variables which are already there by, by LifeRay, which he knows. So it can easy, make it easier for you. It's really a matter of taste. <laughs> I, I, usually, I usually do it uh, for customers who need the preview, so I n use the most quickest Way which is uh, life raise building uh, editor. I, um, I have a on that question. I stood on this very stage uh, the last year and presented a tool which uh, I made within uh, our company to uh, migrate or like move DDMs, deploy them to servers, um, deploy them to internal to your development machine. Um, Sync them to a Git repo and a repository and do all that kind of stuff uh, for uh, uh, ADTs, for templates, and for structures as well. Uh, it's called DDM tool, DDM as in dynamic data mapping. 
So if you Google for Life Ray DDM tool, it's available on GitHub. It's just a CLI tool. You can even have it on setting it to watch, and then you, as soon as you save it in your editor, it uploads itself. It's, it's for free, so use that. <laughs>